All right, it's time for another review. Let's get a Taco Bell. And the mirror's reflection I'm a-dancing on with myself And when there's no one else inside I think the crowd and lonely night Well, I wait so long for my love vibration And I'm dancing on with myself Hey everyone, yet another Transformers review. This time we'll be taking a look at yet another Voyager class figure and an old character that we've known since G1. Ironhide. I bought Ironhide at Toy Story Us along with Starscream and Voyager Megatron for the price of $19.99. That is the usual price for a Voyager class figure. And he he was a pretty good figure. He, uh, he, there was only one of him left, and I couldn't pass on him. And originally, I wasn't going to purchase this figure, you know, at the very beginning, but I caved in a long time ago. However, he has a very low amount of availability. He's one of the wave, wave one figures, and you can hardly find him right now. But if you look hard enough, you might have a chance of finding him. If not, all I can say is the internet. That's it. So here's Ironhide in package. The schematics for the packaging are the same as in Voyager Ratchets. So if you want to know that, I hardly doubt it. Go check out part one of Ratchet. If not, stick around. The schematics are the same. However, no, no, yeah, everything is exactly the same. The only difference is headshot and the Ironhide name tagging, and the figure inside, of course. There he is in packaging. He has like what three um, wires. And getting Voyager class figures out of their packaging is extremely hard. Let me tell you that. It took me like 15 minutes to get friggin' Ratchet out. So there's the back. One thing I want to say is the fact that his vehicle mode is a little scrunched up. It looks very minicized for some reason and all, you know, squished. But his robot mode is pretty good looking. One Another thing that I want to mention is the fact that the tail, the... Smokestacks are a little bit taller than they actually are. Turn around right here, and as you can see, the smokestacks are very short. Much like, much like uh, what's his name, uh, Matrix Prime said, we got the circumcised version. <laughs> okay, anyway, the back is almost the same as the Ratchet, only got different figures. We got Starscream over here. Now I'm going to go ahead and read the bio to you guys. Autobot weapon specialist and old-fashioned warrior Ironhide is the big stick that backs up the soft steps of Optimus Prime. Paint scarred and chrome chipped by sh sh shrapnel from 100 battles, he is the oldest of the Autobots. Uh, his right hip is a mass of bypasses and temporary solutions. His power core and timing system are irregular, and his idol is set way too high. But his optics are the sharpest on Cybertron, and his cannon arm is as steady as ever. Optimus Prime relies on him for tactical advice and a cool head. As long as they keep making missiles compatible with his cannons, he'll keep fighting until every last Decepticon is a smolding wreck. Wow. He's like the guy that won't retire. Like the Rolling Stones. Anyway, um, here are his specs. He has a strength of 7, an intelligence of 6, a speed of 5, an endurance of 9, a rank of 8, a courage of 9, a fire blast of 6, and a skill of 5. Pretty average, pretty pretty basic. So there you have them, level 3 as the Deluxes and Voyager Ratchet. Here's one last time in his packaging or his box or whatever. I guess we could go ahead and open them up and check out the figure. Okay, so here we have Ironhide. 
Ironhide is a top kick pickup truck. Uh, what exactly type, you know, like the like serial number or whatever, I'm not sure. However, we do know that it's by GMC, according to this logo right here on the front grill. He appeared in the movie, however, he appeared at the same time the other Autobots did, so that would be an hour into the movie. His color scheme is, of course, black. And he has different types of detailing that ha express different type of colors, such as red for the GMC logo, as well as the tailpipes. Uh, glittery, silvery type of blue for the I'm going to call them gas tanks for right now, as well as the back window here. We have some more blue for the roof lights, orange for the, I'm going to call them supporting lights for right now, and metallic silver for the outer rim of the grill as well as the lights. That's pretty much it, really. He has some okay detailing, however, not much is put into it. We have the GMC logo, as well as you can actually feel the grill. We have the... Let's see, what's it called? The road armor detailing right there on the bumper. However, you can't see see it very well. There you go, right there. We have the 4x4 four four, four, four four detailing right there. The gas tanks, I'm call them, are okay detailed. However, I'll present them later on. Oh, something wrong with my voice. We have the Autobot symbol right there at the back, as well as the tail lights, And they look pretty good. However, if you notice, there are tinted windows and windshield but they're very tinted so you can't really see through them you can barely see to the other side there's my finger see if you can see it and there's the camera Wow. but you can hardly see it and they're very tinted however one thing that really puzzled me is why they didn't tint the uh, back window they actually painted it much like a uh, classic bumblebee that's pretty much him he has short smokestacks you know, unlike the picture in the back where they showed him all long and stuff he rolls around pretty nicely, however, the one of the wheels doesn't touch the floor quite nicely. But he's pretty good as a display piece. He doesn't actually have a gimmick in this mode. So he's just, he's just like this. He just has a vehicle mode. And a very good vehicle mode as well. So I guess I'm going to go ahead and start transforming him on to his robot mode. 